Mota de Tabanaka C. We are double dipping with our draft recap. This is the second half. This is the best NFL drafts for fantasy football. Oh my God! Wow! And number one for me was the Arizona Cardinals. Shout out to the fantasy footballers, uh, Andy, Mike, and Jason. Uh, famously Arizona Cardinals fans. So I think they must have had an incredible draft experience because obviously Marvin Harrison Jr. goes off the board. Number four to the Arizona Cardinals becomes their new de facto number one wide receiver. But the rest of the draft, they absolutely crushed as well. They were able to get Trey Benson in the third round. Uh, who was one of my top-rated running backs. Obviously, Jonathan Brooks, had he not had the ACL injury, would have probably been my top back. But because of the injury, I actually had Trey Benson as my top back. Uh, so the fact that they got the top wide receiver and arguably the top running back uh, on this team, I thought was a lot of juice for fantasy, especially because you know James Conner is obviously going to see his touches, but has also never finished a full season, is a bit longer in the tooth. So you could definitely see Trey Benson take over this running back spot for the Arizona Cardinals. But they just crushed in terms of they got depth, they got defense, they got line help, they got everything you could possibly want, honestly, from this draft. So behind behind Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, in the first round, they also get Darius Robinson uh, on the defensive end to help. Uh, then they go and get Max Melton at uh, pick 43 in the second round, defensive back. Uh, Trey Benson we talked about. Then they get Isaiah Adams, also in the third round at pick 71, a guard to help the offensive line. They get Tip Ryman in the third round at pick 82, who is a massive. He's six foot five, 270, put up 28 on the bench. He's a big boy tight end uh, who's able to do a lot of the blocking stuff for them that, you know, um, Trey McBride isn't necessarily going to do as a receiving tight end. And then they just continue to add depth with Elijah Jones, uh, defensive back at pick 90 in the third round. They come back, get Dadrian Taylor Demerson, uh, another safety at 104 uh, in the fourth round. They get Xavier Thomas at the defensive end in the fifth round. Christian Jones, an offensive tackle, they get him in the fifth round. They get Tiwan Palmer, some wide receiver depth uh, in the sixth round, and then come back, get one more defensive back in Jaden Davis at 226-7. So when you talk about adding MSJ, uh, MSJ and Trey Benson to this offense, how that can potentially affect um, Kyler Murray and boost his value, uh, the way that James Conner can still operate as kind of like the thumper back and Trey Benson will have a role and potentially take over more in the future. And then the fact that Tip Ryman doesn't interfere necessarily with what you want Trey McBride to be. I actually loved this draft for the Arizona Cardinals and their overall prospects as a team. Uh, next up for me was the Los Angeles Chargers. They pick up Joe Alt, the uh, Joe Thomas clone, at number five in the, in the first round. So, obviously, you're putting the anchor on that offensive line, protecting Justin Herbert, and obviously also improving the run game right away. But then, you know, I think uh, – they really surprised people in a sense by coming back in the in the top of the second round to get Lad McConkey, who was one of my top rated wide receivers outside of the big four of MHJ neighbors, Roma Dunes, and uh, Brian Thomas. And so you, I had him at number five on my rookie wide receiver show that I did with Caleb Niemi. Shout out to him. Uh, we did that pre-draft rankings. Uh, so Lad McConkey, I thought was huge at 34. Uh, the only pick I didn't like was Junior Colson, the outside linebacker they took at 69 in the third round, because that to me should have been Blake Corum. That would have made this an absolutely perfect draft. Uh, but they still made up for it because they came back and got Kamani Vidal, who I really, really liked a lot uh, in the pre-draft ranking process. They get him in the sixth round. Uh, they also added defense with uh, Justin Aboigby, a defensive tackle. Tarheeb still, 
defensive back and Cam Hart defensive back in the fourth and fifth rounds. And then my guy, Brendan Rice, finds his landing spot. Goat, son of the goat, son of Jerry Rice. Brendan Rice finds his place with the Los Angeles Chargers. And so now you're talking about if Quentin Johnson is able to have any kind of resurgence season, combined with suddenly Lad McConkey and Brendan Rice, and also they add Cornelius Johnson. Now you've got some pieces working in this wide receiver room, and you've got Kamani Vidal operating out of the backfield potentially. I actually think I'm starting to really like what the Los Angeles Chargers put together for this NFL draft and how it will affect their fantasy football future. Next up for me, the Carolina Panthers. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. And that is three oh dams. Oh, damn. And those three oh dams were Xavier Leggett, Jonathan Brooks, and Jatavian Sanders. So I think they did well adding weapons to maximize whatever potential and capabilities that Bryce Young does have. Uh, Xavier Leggett, you know, whatever you think of him as a prospect, I think his personality, his style, uh, his playing style, but also his actual personal style fits in a uh, natural fit with Carolina Panthers. If you haven't seen his interview, it was tremendous, a uh, very personable guy. Uh, so I'll be rooting for him, but then they get Jonathan Brooks. They're the team that sniped Jonathan Brooks away from the Dallas Cowboys and, you know, potentially Jonathan Brooks could be definitely a game changer for their running back room. Uh, Miles Sanders was obviously a disappointment. All you have other than that is Chuba Hubbard. So I love that pick. And Jatavian Sanders, I had comped to Ben Watson back in the day. And I think he steps into essentially a starting role here and could actually sneaky be, you know, uh, the most valuable rookie tight end uh, right after Brock Bowers. You know, I really do love Ben Sanat, and I'll talk about him very, very soon. Uh, but I really loved those picks. And they also added some uh, defensive help with uh, Trevor Wallace, Chow Smith-Wade, and Jaden Crumdy. But mainly those, those three uh, added weapons, Xavier Leggett, Jonathan Brooks, and Jatavian Sanders, I really liked. Uh, what the Carolina Panthers did in this draft with what they had available to them. But the Washington Commanders maybe stole this draft. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. oh, I said, oh, damn. Jaden Daniels at number two. They do commit to Jaden Daniels, uh, the running quarterback so he definitely will have fantasy value he comes into a situation where he already has terry mclaurin uh and he's got a backfield with austin eckler and brian robinson but then you get jerzon newton uh who fell a little bit a defensive tackle in the second round to add to the defense they also get uh mike sainer is still a defensive back but then ben sanat who was comped pre-draft to a Mike Allstott with better hands falls to them uh, in the second round. Uh, so he it'll be very interesting to see how they use him. And then they get Brandon Coleman, a guard, at, uh, pick 67 in the third round, followed up with Luke McCaffrey, CMC's brother, uh, in the last pick of the third round. So you get uh, a generational... Uh, talent in the sense of his father was in the NFL, his brother's in the NFL. It's one of those things where it's like it would be rather disappointing if Luke McCaffrey was the one that somehow made it to the NFL, but that was a disappointment. And it, it it's one of those things where, generally speaking, it's like he's going to have some modicum of success, I feel like, just almost based on his personal need to achieve. And then you had Jordan McGee, Dominique Campton, and Javante Jean-Baptiste, all defensive picks through the fifth and final round, wrapping it up for the Commanders. And finally for me, the New England Patriots. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. I actually was not a super fan of what the Patriots did. Me, personally, I would have taken Marvin Harrison Jr. at pick three. And I would have taken, you know, maybe a cornerback falls to me. I thought Bo Nix would go much lower than he did. 
Uh, you could have traded up. You could have done a couple of different things. You could have maybe taken one of these uh, Michael Pratt or Jordan Travis guys later. They they do end up taking another quarterback later, which I will talk about. But they, they end up going with Drake May, the chalk pick. I think it was the right pick because ultimately the quarterback is the most important player on the team. And you set him up for success by then following up with taking Jalen Polk uh, in the second round. You take Caden Wallace, an offensive tackle, in the third round. You follow up with Layden Robinson, a guard, uh, in the fourth round. And then Javon Baker also, who honestly might even be better than Jalen Pope, another wide receiver that you get in the fourth round. Um, and then you uh, get Marcellus Dial, a defensive back, in the sixth round. And then this pick, very interesting to me. I know I'm going to be very alone on this island, but Joe Milton, quarterback from Tennessee at 193 in the sixth round, he is tremendously athletic. He is an absolute fucking cannon for an arm. And yes, it took him kind of some time to develop, but it'll be interesting to see what kind of camp whispers and rumors we see swirling around the New England Patriots. And especially if Drake May is having early processing problems and you have Joe Milton throwing 70 yard bombs, uh, you know, in practice and on the sideline and fans are watching this, I think at some point you may get fans clamoring for Joe Milton if things do not go well for Drake May. But I think, this was a tremendous pick because, again, it's a six-round pick, and you, at worst, you got uh, to take a look at Joe Milton for free, and you get a backup quarterback out of it. And what I love is that you know, if if there's any team that knows about taking a six-round rookie that turns out to be your next big thing at quarterback, I think it's the New England Patriots. A uh, couple honorables, because honestly, I there were so many teams that I felt like had really good drafts that I could have picked from here. The 49ers, uh, the the Bears, obviously with Caleb Williams and Roma Dunes. I liked what the Broncos did, honestly, uh, with Bo Nix and um, with uh, Troy Franklin falling to them. I'll, they also got Audric Estime, who I really like as a running back, so... Broncos kind of did some things. The Bengals, the Eagles, the Vikings, the Lions. Oh, my. Hell, even the fucking Pittsburgh Steelers had themselves one hell of a draft because they just kept pegging offensive linemen after offensive linemen after offensive linemen. Thanks, Jamal. None of this guy. None of this guy. None of this guy. None of this guy. Nunduska! And then we got Roman Wilson to top it off. So I was very happy as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and I do think that it will help tremendously in terms of our run game. Uh, you know, I can always, I already see people talking about how Najee Harris is a bounce-back candidate. So I really uh, am excited for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I am excited for this NFL season, and I am excited for Best Ball Mania 5 dropping tomorrow for Underdog. Uh, you know, I don't do promos and stuff on the show, but check out what I'm doing on social media. You might catch some shit over there. Otherwise, though, uh, appreciate you guys following. Super kick that subscribe button. Drop some comments. Share it around. Help the algorithm, because the only way this show will ever survive and thrive is with you guys. And until the next time, I will catch you all on the flip side.